Hey everyone, Steve here. I'm a big fan of using motion templates in my work, and there are a number of online resources that offer some really good ones. One of my favorite sites is motionvfx.com. Not only is there a huge collection of Final Cut Pro templates, but their templates are very well designed, which in my estimation, puts them one notch above all the other stock sites that offer motion templates. Now, one thing I hear quite often is that their templates are complicated to modify. And to be honest, they can be if you're not fluid in Apple Motion, which is the app that Motion VFX uses to create their Final Cut Pro templates. What I wanna do in this tutorial is show you that with just a little bit of knowledge, you can modify the templates in Motion, then publish them to Final Cut Pro so that it's always available whenever you need it. Now, before we start, I wanna let you know that I just updated our flagship Final Cut Pro for Mac tutorial to version 10.6.6. And using this code, you can purchase the training for 30% off. It's like taking a one-on-one -on -one class with me, and it includes all the media for following along. Check it out using the link below. So with that, let's get into the lesson. Most of the templates that you'll find at motionvfx.com are in the $50 range. That may seem rather pricey, but when you think about creating them yourself or hiring someone, they're actually quite cheap by comparison. The template I'm working with is template number 1010. You may have purchased a different template, but the techniques I'm about to show you will apply to any template. Here, I have it opened in motion and I'll play it because I've rendered it to RAM. This template has a very Harry Potter vibe to it. I love the dark moody cloud background, which will work well with a pirate themed project I'm working on. One of the things I really like about motion VFX templates is that they're very long. This one is 24 seconds long, more than enough for a title build so that you don't have to loop it. The other thing that I like about Motion VFX templates is how organized the elements are. If you look at the layers list, you can see their design team has done a great job of clearly labeling all these different elements. So for example, all the 3D text is under one group. So if I check this box, all the titles are turned off. If I move the playhead to a new location, I can see some light rays composited into the background, and I can turn those on and off by clicking the box next to that group. I can also do the same for the colorized group, which controls the overall tint of the composite. Additionally, you can also spill open a group to see the elements inside it. So for example, here's a layer of dust that's creating the glowing particles. I can enable those or disable them. The designers have also used a graphic element called Dirty Lens, which gives the image a grungy look. I'm gonna turn it off to make the background a little cleaner. The next step is to go through the layers list and decide what you want to leave on and what you want to leave off. So right now, I have just the animated background, which is going to be perfect for the intro title I'm working on in Final Cut Pro. One of the first things I recommend you do when you open a motion template is click the project icon at the top of the layers list. And then in the inspector, choose project. And what you see here is a list of all the published parameters. These are parameters that the template designers decided to publish for us so that when the template is saved as a generator for Final Cut Pro, you'll be able to change the look and feel of the background using these controls. Since I don't plan on publishing the 3D text layer with this template, there's no reason to have all these text parameters available in Final Cut Pro. They'll just make the UI messy. So I'm gonna unpublish all of them. Unfortunately, there's no way to select all of them and remove them with one click. You have to go on an item by item basis and unpublish each one. So now I've removed all the text parameters so that when I publish this template for Final Cut Pro, I'll only end up with the parameters that control the look of the background. For example, modifying the Colorize One parameter by choosing a new color, you can see how the color change affects the look of the clouds. Or, for example, if you want to change the dust color. That's this floating pixie dust. And I can increase the dust brightness, or lower it. and I can even play with the background opacity if I want. So essentially, these are the published parameters that will appear in Final Cut Pro, allowing me to control the look of the background. Oops, I noticed that I left one text parameter in the list that I need to unpublish. And now I have a very clean parameters list from which to publish this background. So I'll do that next. I'll go to the File menu and choose Publish Template. I'll give it a name. I'll call this Pirate BG for background. 
and I'll click Publish as Final Cut Pro Generator. And lastly, I'll create a specialized category for this. I'll call this My Motion Templates, but you can call it whatever you like. I'll click Create and then Publish. I'll jump over to Final Cut Pro. Now I want to add that motion template I just published. So where is it located? If I go to the generator sidebar, I'll see the category I just published, My Motion Templates. And here's the pirate background sans text. I'm going to add this generator to my project by selecting it and pressing E to append it to the timeline. I'll press Shift Z to zoom out. And you can see everything is here. And with the template selected, you'll notice that when I go to the Generator Inspector, you'll see the same list of parameters that were published for Motion. At this point, I can then select each parameter and manipulate and adjust them. For example, the background colors, the dust color. I prefer more of a bright yellow color to make them stand out more. And then I'll bring up the brightness. There's just a little bit too much orange in the clouds for my taste, so I'm going to cool them off by choosing a blue tone from the color picker. I'll skim over the generator to see how my changes look. Very nice. Now I happen to notice something. This template has a widescreen matte built into the template, which is really nice. It gives the background a nice cinematic look, but I think it would be much better if there was a parameter control for turning it off. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go back to motion and make one small modification. I'll go over to the template, right click and choose Open in Motion. And that should bring me right back to the motion project I saved. The first step is to locate where that widescreen mat is in the layers list. And I'll find it in the screen element section by spilling open that group. Then spill open the widescreen group, and you'll see there's a rectangular mask that controls the mat. Now I could turn off the widescreen mat and then republish this template so that it doesn't show up with the mat in Final Cut Pro, but I would rather give myself the option to turn it on or off. This is where the very helpful motion feature called rigging comes in. I'm going to create what's called a rig. A rig lets you map one or more parameters to a preset value to a single control. For example, I can create a checkbox that when clicked on will automatically turn the mat on and off. So let's set up that rig. With the rectangle mask selected, it will load it into the inspector. And we need to identify what parameter in this list controls a mask. It happens to be this size slider. Notice that as I drag on the size value hot scrubber, the mask size is adjusting in the canvas. So what we want to do is rig this parameter. So I'm going to right click on this button and I'm going to choose Add to Rig, Create New Rig. And when you create a rig, you're going to create what's called a widget. A widget is an interface element. It could be a checkbox, a pop-up menu, or a slider. I want a simple checkbox widget. So I'm going to add a new checkbox. And this calls up the widget inspector. So the next thing I want to do is record the parameter changes that I'm going to make here into what Motion calls a snapshot. At present, this mask is currently snapshotted at this value, 2004 pixels. But I want to create a snapshot with a value where the mat is not visible. So to do that, I'm going to record my parameter changes by clicking this Start button, and then I'm going to drag upward on the hot scrubber until the mask is completely off the screen. So what Motion is doing is recording that value into the snapshot. Once I have the parameter value I want, I'll click Stop Rig Edit Mode. And now when I click the checkbox, Mat On, Mat Off, Mat On, Mat Off. Great. I can even name the widget by selecting it and typing out Widescreen Mat, and press Return. And now I want to publish this checkbox, so I'll go over to the Widget Inspector, and next to Checkbox, I'll click the button and choose Publish. If I want to see that published parameter, I click on the project icon. And in the project pane, there's my widget, and it appears as a checkbox. Now in order to see this new widget appear in Final Cut Pro, I need to save the template. I'm going to jump back into Final Cut Pro. And I'm going to need to replace this current background with the updated one. So I'm going to drag the template on top of the clip in the timeline and choose Replace. And then when I look in the inspector, I now have that checkbox to turn on and off the widescreen mat. So how do we customize this motion template a bit further? Right now, the animation is a little too slow for my taste. One of the things you'll notice is that if you select the clip and press Command-R, 
You cannot change the speed of a template by just placing it into the timeline. You have to turn it into a compound clip. So I'm going to select the clip and press Option G and type in Pirate BG CC for compound clip and press Return. So now I've placed my template into a compound clip so that when I press Command R, I now have the ability to speed up that template. Now it's much faster. Of course, I can also slow it down as well. The point is, you have to place the template into a compound clip in order to control the speed. So far, so good. So let's add some text and graphic elements to our background. So what I'm going to do is step into the compound clip by double-clicking. And I'm going to add my text layer, starting here. I'm going to press Ctrl-T to add the text layer and make it a bit longer. And I'll select the text, double-click, and type out Pirates, all in uppercase. So under the font list, I'll scroll down to the piratey font that I installed. I'll increase the text size. So now I have my text over the background. If I want to take this one step further, I'm going to make this text 3D, and I'm going to give it an old wood plank look, like it's from the deck of an old pirate ship. That looks great. Next, I want to remove the A and create a space because I want to put a graphic in the middle of the word. I'll jump back in history to the parent project, select the Jolly Roger graphic, and copy it. I'll then step back into the compound clip by double clicking, and I'm going to paste the graphic as a connected clip and adjust its duration to match the 3D title. Because I published parameters for that graphic, I'm going to scale it, move it over, and down, placing it into the empty space. The skull and crossbones looks a bit too flat and clean for my liking, so I'm going to go into the effects browser, and I'm going to drop the comic basic effect right onto the graphic, and what that does is make the graphic a little bit more three-dimensional while giving it a ruddy look. I'll close the effects browser and check out how it's all working so far. That's great, but the graphic in the text just pops on the screen. So we're going to use one of my favorite title packages from the same company, Motion VFX, that I got this background template from. So what I'm going to do is go over to the title sidebar, open it up, and I'm going to locate some titles called M Behaviors. These can be downloaded and installed from the Motion VFX site. What's fantastic about these is that they allow you to animate any element in your timeline simply by adding it as a title. No keyframing is required. So for example, I can drag this bounce in title over the layer stack in the timeline and it animates everything directly below it. If I play this back, all three elements bounce in. The thing is, I don't want the animation to affect the background. I just want it to affect the text and graphic. So in order to do that, I'm going to select these two connected clips, then press Option G to create a compound clip. I'll name this graphic set CC for Compound Clip, and press Return. Next, I'll double-click that Compound Clip to step inside it. And here is where I want to add my M Behavior title. Back in the browser, I'm going to look for an animation called Swing In. By the way, if you have trouble finding it, you can always use the search field. Here it is, Swing In. I'm going to drop this title on top of the two graphics in the layer stack. When I play this, I get this nice Swing In animation of both elements. You can even stack end behavior titles. So for example, perhaps I wanted to add a blur in at the same time. So I'm going to add a blur. So now the graphic layers blur and swing in. Now I also need them to animate out. Notice these behaviors either have the word in next to them or out. I'll scroll toward the bottom to locate the blur out behavior, then add it to the end of the layer stack. I'll play that back. All right, let's see what this looks like in the parent project. So I'll click the back history button, and let's play back the final title with the background. So 
So what'd you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider giving us a sub, click the bell to be notified, and we'll see you in the next episode of MacBreak Studio. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.